Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of What's My Line. I'm your host, Chris Lemchi, and I hope everyone's having a good Friday. I know for sure that I am. I got my second shot of the Pfizer vaccine, and as of right now, I'm feeling good. Like, I don't have, like, a fever or anything like that. I just, my arm's a little bit sore, and I was pretty tired after the shot, but other than that, I'm good. I'm just happy I got the vaccine. I'm happy, like, I can stop stressing out so much about, uh... (laughs) <laughs> being around people, I know, like, it's not completely, we're not completely out of the woods yet, but still, like, this makes me feel a little bit more comfortable going out and, you know, going to my, de- going to my day job and actually being around, being around people in restaurants and stuff, so yay for that. Um, before I get to my host today, I just want to mention, I did watch the, the Snyder Cut, or the Zack Snyder's Justice League movie, uh, the four-hour version, and I also watched the Justice's Grey version, the black and white one. And I gotta say, I liked it. I really did. I was very, I was very surprised at how much I was. <laughs> I was very surprised at how much I was gonna like it. And yeah, I I'm gonna go into more detail more when I can get my friend Chris Riley back on the show. But until then, I just want to say, if you guys, if you guys are a fan of DC, uh, if you guys are a fan of Zack Snyder, I think you're gonna like it. And if you're not a fan of Zack Snyder, um, well, I don't know what to tell you. It's just, it's just not going to work for you. But yeah, for me as a big DC fan, uh, as a big Dark Side fan too, uh, this movie did it. It did what it needed to do. It it, it redeemed that that awful twenty seventeen version. And it's it's hard to say if I would have liked this movie back in twenty seventeen. Like obviously, this would have never been released in theaters, no matter what. Like the Warner Bros. was never going to greenlit a four hour film for a movie theater because they the runtime's too long and they want to have like at least like a two and a half, maybe three hours for a movie so that way they can get more showings for a theatrical run. But still I kinda wish I did see this in twenty seventeen so I could have looked at it with a very broader, fresher scope. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, but still, I liked it. If you if you're a fan of the like I said, if you're if you're a fan of DC, definitely check it out. And yeah, let me know what you think. All right, guys, getting into business today. Today, I'm bringing on a very special guest. She's an actress, a host, all-around badass performer, and she's also a Reiki specialist, too. So, guys, please welcome onto the show the wonderful, the amazing Miss Grace Hancock. So, Grace, how's it going? Welcome to my show. How are you? Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? It's good to see your face. Yeah, it's good to see your face, too. I'm doing well. Like I was telling you before, I got my vaccine in. Feeling good. You know, beats getting COVID. So I'm good. I know. I'm so jealous. I'm I'm really looking forward to getting that. I really hate needles. I really hate shots. But I'm like, every time I go to the doctor, I'm just like, put it in, put it in. But they're like, not yet. And I'm like, damn it. Yeah, exactly. Today they were just like, okay, just I need you to relax your shoulders, keep relaxing, keep relaxing. Just put it in already. Just stick it, just stick it in me. It served the damn thing, all right? <laughs> Which I know, uh, double on Chandra, but still. It's just like, put it in already. Shit. Exactly. I'm like, I don't want any foreplay here, nurse. Like, just put it in, man. Exactly. Yeah, you don't have to buy me dinner. Just, but... you know, right to the point. Pop, they were good. <laughs> uh, I know. I hate when they like count down. They're like, okay, ready? And I'm like, no, don't tell me when. Like, just do it. Mm-hmm. see that's why i think i would be the worst like doctor because i would have no bedside manner like okay you ready yeah boom it's in like wow <laughs> like yeah i don't i don't i don't play around <laughs> see i need you to be my doctor i'd be a horrible doctor because my hands would be shaking so badly i'd be like okay are you ready oh god i'm so sorry like i'd be rotten at it not my uh, calling well I, I, one thing i like to ask people especially in for this past year you know pandemic coronavirus how did that affect you if any plans that you had going on Oh man. I mean, it's a loaded question for sure, because it's so, it's weird to say like, it was really shitty, but I'm actually really grateful for it. But that's honestly the truth, even though it's been obviously a really tragic time, a lot of job loss, income loss, like life loss, both of my parents had it. And there was like, like a two week where I was like, are both of my parents going to die? Like, this is not what I planned. So it's definitely horrible, but I had a lot of good stuff going. I had a lot of really great acting momentum going um, that obviously came to a screeching halt. So I was like, oh, cool. Now what? (laughs) Um, So that sucked. But then I was able to find, uh, you know, like with Reiki and with a lot of other stuff that popped up that um, I, it would have taken me years and years to put 
all that together had it not been kind of like quarantine life, even though everyone was like, it's quarantine. You have all the time in the world. That wasn't really the case for me at all. Cause I'm used to working from home, but even then, like with just like a lack of auditions and things like that, I did have a, a much wider window of time to like do that stuff. So it sucked, but I think that we really honestly, like as a collective and for me individually really made the best of it. Cause I'm really happy with a lot of like the cultural and societal changes that came about last year and like taking out the trash in a lot of ways, hint, hint. Um, and, uh, and for myself personally, like a lot of self-work went into last year and I'm, I'm much, much, much better on the other side of it, even though it sucked, Yeah. but Hey, Hey, you know, you, you, you made lemonade or yeah, lemonade out of lemons. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now I'm going to turn it into a margarita. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so you mentioned being an actress. Did you always want to grow up as an actress? And are you originally from LA or where are you from originally? I grew up in Arizona. I've been in LA for uh, 10 years. It's definitely, it's my home. I'll never leave ever, ever, ever. Even if I quit, if I, for whatever reason, didn't want to do acting anymore. Like I adore LA. I will never leave. Um, but no, I'm from Arizona. I, yeah, I mean, I definitely, I think I wanted to be an actor, like since I was like three. So I was definitely somebody who was just like, I don't know what that is, but I want to do that. And I remember asking my mom when I was little, like who decides where the camera is pointing. And she was like, do you mean like the director? And I think what I really meant was like the DP, but like, I was even really, really, when I was really, really little, I was like, what is that? I like this. And I remember being very like moved by movies when I was young. So yeah, I definitely wanted to do it really early on. I think I kind of like vacillated between like singer, dancer, actor, because I started as a dancer. And so it was kind of like just performance in general, but yeah, I definitely have always wanted to do it, have kind of always done it. And unfortunately, here I am still doing it, even though it's going to put me in the damn grave. But it's it's a good time for sure, <laughs> as you can relate, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you remember the the first movie you watched? You know, it's so funny. I've t- I think I've talked about this. Well, I have talked about this on other shows, but I the one that I remember, like I guess first is the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston, <laughs> which is like this real. It's like a five hour, like really deep sweeping film. I don't know what the fuck I was doing at like age five watching the VHS of that, but I remember just really being moved by like this grand, like this big scale storytelling, and I would literally watch it and then rewind it, and then watch it again like a psychopath. So I remember watching that only because for whatever reason, I would just watch it over and over again. I'm sure I watched, you know, like some little like baby show before that, but I guess that was my first memory. Yeah, that, was, which that is, one stuck out to you for, for yeah. reasons. <laughs> I, I, I'm team Charlton, apparently, like God knows why. <laughs> you, you said VHS and it's five hours. Was there the two VHSs or was it actually just the one? I think back then... <laughs> Oh my God, that like brings it like the Titanic VHS. The Titanic, yeah, the Titanic. When you were like, oh VHS. shit, tape two. No, I actually do think it was on one, but I'm sure it wasn't actually five hours. I guess I should just look it up, but it was too long for a toddler. Like, what was I doing? Like, what a weird kid. They were like, so sad. Grace is going to be a serial killer for sure. Like she's in there with her 10 commandments. Um, but no, it was just one VHS, but I think I wore it out. Like, I think we had to rebuy the film at some point because I watched it so many times. So Again, weird kid, Chris. Very weird kid. I was about to say, so you you wore out the film. Your parents had to buy another copy of it, and you I get and I bet you probably wore that copy out too. Do, do you own this on like DVD as well? Like, do you have it framed in your wall somewhere? Like Grace's first movie. <laughs> I know I should. No, you know, I think I have when they remastered it and turned it into the Blu-ray. I think I have in our living room and our like little like thingy where movies are, you know, the thingy. The thingy. Um, I think I have, I do have the Blu-ray that somebody got me like more so as a joke than anything else. So it's like, here, hopefully you won't wear this one out. But I actually don't think that I watched it since. I guess I should. Yeah. A little dose of nostalgia. <laughs> yeah, you should put it on like, you know, put it on whatever laptop or whatever TV or whatever now. Um Put it on there and just kind of flash back to like three or five year old Grace. So I know, yeah, it's been a long time since I've watched it. I I wonder if it holds up. I mean, TBD. <laughs> okay, so you 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 know started out with the Ten Commandments, <laughs> and then from there, do you, what was like your first acting job? Like, how did you did you like find like a school play or like a student film? Like, what what was like the first thing you ever did as an actor? I mean, I guess the first thing I did as a performer was definitely dancing. And then I moved into uh, musical theater. So I started doing like local community theater and then I got into like singing. So then I was like singing competitively. So I was doing like singing competitions while I was doing musical theater. Um, And then that kind of trickled into like straight plays when I got a little bit older. And then that sort of trickled into 
uh, like student films and then films and then television and kind of just like grew from there. But yeah, it was mostly just like dancing and then eventually community musical theater, you know, that, that pristine, that artistic level, just community theater greatness. Uh, but I'm so grateful for it. I mean, my happiest memories uh, growing up where I like went to high school and stuff are absolutely, uh, you know, the, all of the psychodrama kids. And there's this theater where I'm from called the Elks Theater. That's just absolutely my happiest place. Like I have just the happiest memories there. I like, I dream about it all the time. Like it's very, I feel very connected to that space. So I was very grateful for it. Uh, so it was fun. What were some of the plays that you did? Did you do like, yeah, I know you said singing. Did you do like Little Shop of Horrors? Uh, I didn't do Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, I've done Guys and Dolls twice. I was Adelaide and then I did it later, a few years later and I was Sarah. And that's why I didn't do Little Shop because I was doing Guys and Dolls at another theater at the time. I've done, oh my God, I think I've done The Music Man twice. I've done Grease. I've done uh, Peter Pan. Like all the kind of, I did Annie. No, no, I wasn't in Annie, but I choreographed Annie. Um, Cause I worked with this like theater company for a long time and I did a lot of the choreography. And then when I wasn't in the show, I did the choreography when I was doing a different show at a different theater. Cause then I also did a lot of straight plays at my high school. Like I did like Jane Martin, like talking with like stuff like that. And then later I did an original play with Jane Martin. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, I did, I was a psychopath. Like I was, I would do like 10 plays a year. Like it was it, totally manic. Um, but yeah, but all the classics, you know, I've done them all if, if not once or twice. My, uh, my Chihuahua Ratsy, uh, who, um, you know, passed away in December, unfortunately, but she, uh, her, her real name is Adelaide and she's named after Adelaide from Guys and Dolls. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So. Uh, so, you know, you're doing the plays. Do you miss singing in plays and stuff? Like, do you miss dancing at all? I really, really miss dancing. Um, obviously you can do dance and like dance classes. I miss performing dance. Uh, I also have had kind of a tricky ankle injury this past year. That's kind of uh, ruined a lot of my ballet plans, but I definitely miss performing uh, just like that. energy. sometimes I'm like, you know, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll do theater. And then I'm like, Grace, what are you doing? No, like, cause it's so different. Like screen acting and theater acting. It's like football and baseball. It's like, they're both sports, but that's about all they have in common. So I, I feel like now that I finally figured out like screen acting, I don't want to like get into old habits and do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I imagine that at some point in my life, I'll definitely go back to it. I don't, I don't miss singing as much. I liked singing a lot. Um, my voice in particular tended to be more of a of an unpredictable tool for me. Like my acting abilities and my dancing abilities are pretty much always there. Like I can bring them up whenever I need them. Uh, whereas singing tended to either be really, really great, but then there was days that were just really off and that really bummed me out and I'm a control freak. So uh, it was something that I didn't like as much just because of that, because especially as a woman, like your hormones really affect your vocal cords. Like what you eat, it's really, really, you have to be on a really strict diet, really strict like rehearsal. Like you have to warm up your voice at the same time every day. And it was just, it kind of, it made me feel a little like, you know, I have a problem with like authority. So I was like, no, I don't want to. So it wasn't my favorite thing, but I do love it. I still love it. I sing for fun. I still, occasionally there's like a singing audition and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> but it's fun. So I still get to do it a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Plus yeah, it's a, that little like backup talent that you got like, oh, we need someone who can sing. Like, oh, I guess I'll do it, you know? <laughs> I know my manager's always like pushing me and I'm like, I don't know, but, but like La La Land is like a great, like that would be a great fit for like my vocal style. So it's like, you know, there's still stuff out there that's, that's film related, that's still singing. So it's yeah, fun exactly. to be able to have the option to do it if it comes up. Yeah. And Hey, you know, they're doing little shop of horrors. Like Chris Evans is going to be the, the dentist. So maybe they, they need to find somebody to play Audrey and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, if not Audrey, like, Hey, I'm, I'm, definitely looking for a new dentist Chris <laughs> you want to work on these tidies yeah yeah they're de I'm definitely I'm they're, they're definitely turning a lot of musicals into into films so hey I'm here I'm a veil <laughs> yeah it's funny I I was in choir in like seventh or eighth grade and I only did it for like a year because that that was like right when my voice was changing so I went mm -hmm. from like sounding great like this to like this and it's like oh my god <laughs> I know they were so excited because they had like like a male soprano and then you were like oh sorry no that was last week it's yeah. I'm a man now oh man now yeah this is how I sound uh yeah, yeah. you guys want to hear some songs here we go yeah <laughs> you come back you're like hey guys and they're like oh shit oh God. shit you lost another one <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so you went from uh doing plays to student films how was that transition from like you've mentioned going from like the medium of theater to actually in screen acting oh man uh well bumpy to say the goddamn least, it was real bumpy. Uh, because also, 
you know, ironically enough, I went, to, like, I went to drama school. Like I literally was in like this crazy program. I got my BFA and it was like psychotic. Like you, just, I remember, like, I always say this, but like, I literally just had a cold for four years. Like it was, I slept two hours a night for like four years. It was like in rehearsal 20 hours a day. It was like, like just craziness, but it was super, super lacking in screen acting. Like I, I think we only did like one semester of that kind of stuff. So I remember just being really like thrown in and I would, I you know, was, had a lot of people who wanted me to do their stuff. And so it was totally just like trial by error. Like I never, ever want to find any of my early work. And I hope no one else does either. Um, I'm sure it's, I remember it being a lot, you know, worse than it is, but it was definitely, it, I totally just had to figure it out because nobody told me what to do. I had no idea because screen acting is so weird. Like people are mm-hmm. like, oh, you just, you just act natural. It's like, no, 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 honey. Like it is so weird. You're doing all this weird stuff. It is completely not, it's not naturalistic at all what you're doing. Yeah. So I just kind of like stumbled my way through it, but luckily I had like good friends and, you know, student film opportunities to kind of, you know, try it on for size and then like slowly figure it out. And then unfortunately, that's also what you do in LA. You just kind of like stumble your way through and then you're kind of like, well, okay, I guess that worked because you don't really get a lot of feedback as an actor. So Mm -hmm. it's a lot of just kind of finding your own process and stuff. So yeah, so it was bumpy, but I'm happy that uh, it's behind me and hopefully I now have it pretty figured out. You should, you should go back and rewatch your stuff. Like I know we're all our worst critics, but I actually went back and rewatched like the first thing I ever did. And I I did like the, like the grimace, like, oh my God, oh, why, what am I, what am I doing? But it's still, it's, weird kind of like therapeutic to see like oh man thank god i'm not that guy anymore but like <laughs> but it's also you can, like, like enjoy cool, your like, progress yeah exactly you see your progress like oh, i've become so much better like and i can only gonna get better from here and yeah it's just such a weird like huh i, I was so shit before but now i'm i'm decent i guess <laughs> you're like yeah i might yeah. i know i should it's also like i feel like it's probably easier i find that like stuff that i've done around like the three to four year mark, like once it's been three to four years, like since I shot it, I can be, I can watch it a little more objectively. Yeah. <laughs> if it's something like I, cause I hate watching anything. I like it's so, I just want to die. It's just nails on a chalkboard. But yeah, there's probably enough time that's passed that I can have a good chuckle about yeah. it. Oh God, <laughs> unearth those. So when you, when you first moved out to LA, did you know anybody here or you just came in like blind, don't know anybody. I'm just going to make my mark here. I mean, kind of yes and no. My, I, I didn't know a fucking person, but my, at the time my sister lived here, okay. which made all the difference. So I totally just like, was like, Hey, be my friend. And all your friends are now my friends. Um, I'm sure she loved that, but yeah, so I had her, she eventually ended up moving to Austin for a time. And now, you know, fast forward a decade is back in LA. Thank God. Um, Cause we're very close, but at the time it was just her. And then I was very fortunate because I was in that like drama school program that we had, uh, like a showcase. So I came to LA with representation because I was signed oh, okay. at that showcase in like January, uh, like towards the end of my, uh, of the year of my last year doing that. So I, so I, I mean, oh God. And I love her name's Mina. We've been together for 800 years. She's like family. I'm, she says that I'm like the daughter she's never had. We're very close. I'm very grateful. Like she'll, I just, I can't thank her enough. Um, Cause I still work with her. So I have her and then I had my sister, but that was it. And then I just kind of showed up and was a complete maniac and Again, didn't know any, I had no idea what I was doing. It was just like, okay. Cause I graduated and two weeks later I I was living in LA. I was like, I'm ready. (laughs) Yeah. I did not, Arizona was not a good fit for me. I was not happy there. I don't like the climate. I don't like the political climate. I don't like the style. Like I don't like a lot of things about Arizona. I'm grateful for it, but I was ready to go. I was happy to go. So you come out here, you know, you have your representation, you have your sister, like, do you remember your first job out here? Oh God. Yes. I still have nightmares. Uh, I was a, I was worked as a barista in Brentwood at the, at the, the one that's right across from like the, by the Whole Foods kind of at like uh, Barrington and San Vicente. There's a coffee bean there that's still there. And it's so weird to go back in. Um, and I worked there for, I, th- I want to say like a year and it was, I mean, it was just, it was really cool. Cause a lot of celebrities came in and like, that was cool. Cause I just moved here and I was like, Oh my God. Uh, but people were horrible. Like Brentwood is kind of like an uppity area. If anybody's listening, who's not in LA. Um, and I lived there for a long time. I was not uppity, but I loved it there, but, um, I'm happier where I am now, but it was a lot of like people who were just trash, just trash humans, just being so rude and horrible. And I'm like, 
I just have such an attitude problem. Like I'm just such a redheaded Gemini. Like I just cannot do customer service because I just cannot fake it. <laughs> and so I was like, not good at that job <laughs> at all. But I eventually quit. Cause I was like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. But I would literally like, I would sit like crisscross on the countertops, like my shoes on the countertops where we were like supposed to be making drinks. And I would like read girl with a dragon tattoo, like on the counter and like ignore customers. Like I was, I was horrible. I was so bad at it. Cause I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to care, but I love coffee, yeah. but the people were bad. But yeah, that was my yeah, first job. Good, but people are, people are trash. Yeah. They were just nasty. Like people would like be on their cell phones and be like mouthing to you. And then I'd be like, dude, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Like, I don't know you, what do you want? <laughs> Like, it's just, it was terrible, but I can definitely laugh about it now. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You mentioned La La Land. You're literally start, you're literally Emma Stone in La La Land. Like you're eventually oh, going yeah, to come back to that coffee being like, oh, I remember these days. And then you look at whoever's working there, like, oh, buck up you. It gets better. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And when I go in there, they always look like, I mean, I haven't been there since like COVID, but they always, they, all the baristas look like they're like 15. I'm like, oh, you young, sprightly, just adorable <laughs> little creatures. Like. And I always try to like be really nice and I tip like absurd amounts because I'm like, I understand. It's terrible. So in those yeah. like first couple of months, was there ever a period where like you like this because it happens to all of us, we just kind of like doubt ourselves, like, oh maybe was, maybe this wasn't a good idea, you know, I'm stuck working this job and things are just going well. Did you ever like doubt yourself like about moving back or you're always like, no, nah, I'm in it. I'm gonna fucking just get through it. No, I mean, I've definitely, there was never a time where I was like, oh, I think I made the wrong decision. And there was never a time when I wanted to move back. There's definitely times where you like <laughs> hit rock bottom and you're like, this is terrible. Like, I don't know if I love this as much as like, cause it's not, you know, I'm not booking or this or that, which, you know, it's always like that up and down of being an actor, which is so fun. But no, I never had those thoughts. I definitely had low points and still have low points um, all the time. I think all actors do. And I think that even you know, there's a misconception that even like what we consider to be like big A-list celebrity, I think that they have low points. I think everybody has low points in this industry, which is just batshit banana crazy. Um, but no, but I never, I mean, I've never doubted myself or wanted to move back or like questioned it because I just have this really, really strong conviction about it. And I, if one day I were to wake up and be done with it, then I would be done with it. But I just do not have that release at all. Even on days when I would really like to have that release. Cause I'm like, I'm tired. This sucks, but I just, I'm not done with it. Like I just can't, I can't not do it yet. Mm -hmm. And I've always had that. And one day, if I don't have that great, I'll go back to coffee bead. But until then, no, it's just, it's really ingrained in me and it's really, it's nice, but annoying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll see how long did it take you to become sad um I became I want to say I think like three or four years okay um because you because I remember it was right at the beginning I want to say of like 2014 and I moved out here in 2011 so I moved out at the end of May in 2011. So yeah, but like, I'm not going to do the math and embarrass myself because it's been a long week, but you could, you could, uh, people yeah, can we'll do the basic math. <laughs> I'm like, you know, so like three to 10 years ish, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I booked my, uh, that January of 2014, I booked like my third one when I like had to join. So it was very you're like a must join at that point. Yeah. Cause I booked, I don't remember what I, I'd done like a film and then I'd done a commercial and then I booked uh, Grey's Anatomy and it was, I had, like, I had to join, like, they cast me and they were like, but you have to be SAG by tomorrow at like 6am. Oh. And I was like, oh shit. So, uh, but it was great. It was a lot of fun. I was very grateful. I'm very, uh, it's nice to have that behind me. Cause I remember for so long, like, you're like, oh man, like SAG, holy shit. Oh man. And so it's nice to like, you forget sometimes when you've already done something similarly to you saying like, you should watch your old stuff and be like, wow, like, look how shitty I used to be like, so you can have that little pat on the back. It's uh it's fun to like recognize when that was something I like couldn't imagine having. And then, you know, now I've had it for a long time. So it's very, I'm very grateful. It's fun. Do you miss being like, I know a lot of people, cause I'm not, I'm not SAG yet. I'm like SAG eligible. And like, everyone's mm -hmm. always telling me, don't do it. Don't join yet because you can still, you're like screwing yourself of like of work potentially. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've heard that. And do you miss being, it's weird to say, do you miss being non-union when you, the goal should be to be SAG, but I just, I get always get these questions like, don't or these people tell me don't join don't join yet don't join yet like okay uh, I won't shit all right relax <laughs> yeah no absolutely no I definitely don't miss being non-union because when you get 
<laughs> when you get SAG, your paychecks look very different, but SAG eligible is the sweet spot. Stay mm-hmm. there for as long as you can. That's what I did. Like, that's why I only joined when I had to don't, don't jump the gun, like live in that happy spot for as at, like as long as you can. Absolutely. Gotcha. Live in that sweet spot. Okay. All right. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. there's no point to do it if you don't need to. I guess that's true. Yeah, and then because then I could still just book a whole bunch of like non-union stuff and like get yeah, especially like so many commercials right like for a long time are non-union, which for me is really really annoying. But for you, that's great. Like live in SAG, like live in SAGE for as long as you can. It's a great spot. Well, so I'm going to ask you this, so people can go and watch this episode. What was the episode of Grey's Anatomy where you were in? Oh. Well, it's a tale of heartbreak and sadness because it was my first like network television show. It was my first joint SAG. I like, I was like a, a, a co-star and I was hanging out with Sandra O oh all day. And she was like mentoring me and like talking to me about acting. And I was like, so bright eyed and bushy. I was like, oh my God. And like uh, that other actor that I love who played like the flash in Friday Night Lights. I'm always spacing on his name, but he was wonderful. I want to say like Gaius. Guy is Charles, but maybe that's his character's name. I don't know. It was too early, but it was, I mean, it just couldn't have been better. Like Chandra Levy was my director. Like it was just a dream come true. And I got fucking cut out of the episode, which happens oh, all the yeah. time, <laughs> but it was my first thing. So of course I told the whole universe. I was like, I and then I got cut out, which happens all the time. I've been cut out of many shows since um, it happens a lot, but it sucked. So I, so I don't know. I remember, I want to say like season 10 or 11, but uh, who knows? It's on a cutting room floor somewhere. Oh, you know, maybe maybe it's only like the DVD extras, you know, deleted scenes. You just you just walk, you randomly put it on, like, oh hey, there I am. That's I'm I know, <laughs> like little baby Grace. I know. I had a I played like a, a surgeon, so I had like the Sloan Memorial like name tag thing with like actually my picture on it. So that like that's all I have as proof. I'm like Rose with the heart of the ocean. I'm like, no, see, I was there. I have this to prove it. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. It was fast. It was a fast day on set. That shows well oiled for sure. Um, but it was awesome. Gotcha. Was that the? I mean, you you had to join at that point. But what was like the first like production you did out here? Like, what was like the first like major show you did or movie? I mean, I want to say that that was definitely my first television show that was like legit because I did a lot of like just like indie stuff before that. I think, and I'd done a little bit of like sizzle reel type stuff, like just random shit. I honestly don't remember. Um, but that was my first, cause TV is like my, like, that's what I love. Like I want to do TV. I want to die on a TV set. Like that's all I want in the world. Um, so that was definitely the first thing. And then it was also, you know, Grey's Anatomy is like known everywhere. Like you could go to any city in the world and people know Grey's Anatomy. So I was like living on cloud nine, but then, you know, snip, snip. So, but yeah, that was definitely my, my first major one. Is there a dream TV show that you want to be in that that's currently airing right now or? <sighs> I mean, American Horror Story for sure. I would love to do uh, that show on HBO. Oh, shit. The one, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It's been such a long week. But the <laughs> one that's pretty recent that came out. Oh my God, I thought, I can't even remember anything love, about love it. Love Country? No, no, I mean that too. I mean, anything that's going to be like kind of like dark or gritty. Like I've been talking a lot about the show like Equinox on Netflix or like Behind Her Eyes also on Netflix. Like that kind of like psychological because I like dark shit. My reps are always like, but you're so funny. And I'm like, but I don't care. Like I want to be like, like dark stuff. So I love anything like that. But American Horror Story for sure. Uh, That kind of vibe. But genuinely, it's just, I I honestly wouldn't care as long as it's just like at least three seasons. Like, I just want to be on a show that lasts. You know what I mean? Like I'll be on Sesame Street if they can guarantee three (laughs) seasons. You know what I mean? Because I just want to have, I like that family, uh, you know, dynamic when you've been on a show for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's always one of the things like when I see like, especially nowadays with social media, like seeing the cast post like all these like pictures of each other, like you can tell like, like Supernatural is like the best example of this. Like, exactly. Yeah, they make such like, they even have the whole hashtag Supernatural family because again, they just become like one big tight unit. And that's so that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, it's really cool. And like working on a set, like, as you know, it's like everybody is who's there when you're working on a set in LA, it's every, every single person there is the best at what they do. So there's no like, kind of power plays like I just feel like yeah. they're always like yeah there's gonna be like a like some friction because it's a high you know it's a high pressure situation but for the most part everybody is so awesome mm-hmm. so it's like it's just such a great 
like, I mean, it's just my happiest place in the world. Like I wish that I always say, I wish everybody could meet me on a set because it's just like peak grace. Like that's just me totally my element, totally happy, not a care in the world. Like it's just the best. So I would like it's to do that. More. that. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned like Pete Grace. Cause I, I, I always consider that like, that's Pete Chris, like me on a set. It's like me turned with the volume way up. Cause I, I'm just in my element. I'm happy. Like, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm just like, my eyes are like this the entire time. Why yeah. not? Like, oh my God. I'm just so excited to be here. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> sort of thing. Like, yeah, oh, everyone's totally. so cool too. Like someone's asked me like, have you, ever, have you ever had like, you know, met assholes or, or pricks on set like you know there's obviously people who, who could have a bad attitude but it's never anything that's ever like brought me down like yeah you know whatever You're right, right. a bad day son you know it's gonna be okay chip up right yeah oh, and wow. people forget too like everybody who's there has been there for 16 hours so it's like people are bound to get a little tired but even but i've never like ever i mean i've had like certain co-stars where I was like, oh no, like I might not chat with her today, but it's like, yeah, she's carrying an entire show. Like it's a huge amount of work and pressure and no sleep and a lot of lines and a lot of shots. And you got to look good and be on point all the time. Like, absolutely. Like you, you deserve to like go be at a court or be grouchy. Like, yeah, but it's never exactly. to the point where I'm like, oh, what a dick, you know, it's the best set is the best. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, yeah, again, once, Hopefully one day, knock on wood, I'll get cast in a series and then at some point get spun off into my own series and then just build off from there. But, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm sending you all the good vibes. Yeah. So in addition to acting, you also are a host out here. How did you get into hosting? Oh, man, I totally just like fell into hosting. I think that uh, it was just basically... <laughs> like, like one day at Collider, they were like, hey, Grace, like you're going to do this. And I was like, What? And then it just kind of went from there, um, which is always so funny too, because Collider has such a repu- like a, uh, a reputation of doing a lot of like, you know, like DC and Marvel. And so I feel like a lot of people always want to talk to me about those things. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I just, I, I liked them. That's about it. That's about like it, my yeah. friend Cameron was like, let's talk about the Snyder cut. And I was like, which one is that again? Like, I don't care. Um, but yeah, so it was totally just started with, uh, I think like Collider, like BTS stuff. And then, cause I kind of, I think people misunderstand because I'm like high energy that I'm also outgoing in real life, which I am not. I'm actually very introverted. So I think once they finally like got to know me at Collider and they were like, oh shit, like Grace is really funny. Then they were just like, perfect, you're on this thing. And I was like, what? Oh no. (laughs) But then it ended up being a lot of fun and um, it all just like, you know, it was just like that snowball effect of like all this kind of stuff. And then I ended up really liking it. And I'd always really shied away from hosting because I really, really, really did not want to be myself on air. Mm-hmm. Uh, I only wanted to be an actor. Like I only wanted lines. Like I felt very vulnerable being a host, like just being grace made me very uncomfortable. So I was always very like anti, like with all those auditions and stuff. I was like, no, I, I, I. and then I was, you know, of course I was completely wrong and I ended up really liking it. So I'm very grateful to Collider for sort of throwing me in the, in the snake pit with that because I was like, oh, okay, this is fine. Um, but yeah, and then I obviously met a lot of like, important people in my life there so that's a plus two um but yeah but I do really I really enjoy hosting I never thought I would what was the what was like the first thing that they put you on (sighs) god it's like it it feels like well 34 years ago (laughs) I mean I think it was like collider bts stuff which was like a blooper show that we did and then I probably like trailer reactions but I remember always being like really annoyed because it was always like 30 seconds before so I'm like dude I'm like wearing my pajamas today like I look like a maniac like and they'd be like grace you're on and I'm like "Okay." okay so I think it was like trailer reactions and then I think they started doing when we were doing was it film hq we were doing film hq then everybody was kind of in the cast because it was a lot of like sketches Mm -hmm. and then it just kind of built from there and then i started like subbing on movie talk and then obviously uh me and joshie did tv talk um and then i did a lot of vo for film hq too so it just kind of it's because collider was such a like a like a boys camp like it was literally just like summer camp like hey why don't you do it why don't you do it like we all just kind of like tossing in stuff like it was so just like a group thing where it was like hey could you do that you could probably do that right like you have no qualifications but like let's try it like that was totally like the vibe so um so I failed up in a way there (laughs) so uh yeah so it was a lot of fun I um like tv I have a lot of fond memories of tv talk for sure I missed yeah I can remember like when you guys I watched a lot of like movie talks and a lot of the collider stuff like I tell you guys are always having fun doing what you did like I think that's why especially 
especially with the collider community or the Shmona community now, but you could tell from all the personalities that like these guys generally love what they're doing and they just stick out and cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, especially like people like Ellis and, you know, it's just such a, you can definitely tell when it's people who, who don't like secretly hate each other. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, and, uh, and Schmodown too. Yeah. Like, and then Christian was like trying to get me to do Schmodown forever. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then he was like, but what if you were the villain? And I was like, where do I sign? So it was just kind of all went from there and now I'm the president. So there, there, there you go. There you go. There you go. So yeah, what, why were you hesitant about doing it? Did you just not want to like do trivia or did you not have like a character at the time? I didn't want to do trivia. I still don't want to do trivia. He tried to convince me to compete for years. I don't even want to do like Josh Brady on GPA. Like I do not like doing public trivia at all. Um, like on air trivia. Mm-hmm. And even though I'm actually fucking great at it, but I don't like doing it in a public setting. I just think that's weird. Um, he wanted me well because Christian and I like used to absolutely fucking hate each other is the first thing we definitely have like a brother sister dynamic now um and and we've worked through all of our shit but we used to absolutely fucking hate each other so there was that (laughs) and then also Shmodan is just very it used to be in studio where we would shoot it you know with humans and it was very rowdy and very loud and everybody who came was very messy and rude and we were all really annoyed because we were all working there you know, full time. And then all these yahoos would come in on Fridays. So it just kind of had like a bad taste in my mouth. But then he was like, you can, but then you can come in and like bully Emma. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. I see where this is going. Like, this is gonna be fun. Cause me and Emma were very close. So it was like, this could be fun. And then obviously I'm always team bad guy. So I was like, all right, fine. And then it ended up being fun. And then, you know, it's gone through a lot of iterations, obviously. And, and, and once again, I guess I failed up cause I'm the president now. So yeah, here we go. are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go from not wanting to be a part of it to to pretty much running the whole damn thing now. So there you go. <laughs> I know. Yeah, who knows what I'll be doing next season? <laughs> How has it been? Like, especially if again, pandemic caused a lot of like delays and pl- plans to change. How's it been doing all that with the pandemic? Like, you guys have done a fantastic job of working around this whole situation. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. You mean with Schmodown specifically? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. I mean, we do all the StreamYard stuff, which is fine. I didn't love that as much um, doing it when I was like working with Kate. Like, I don't like doing the matches over Zoom or over StreamYard as much Um, because in person, those can actually get really fun. But I didn't love that as much. This like doing the president stuff is a little more fun uh, doing it remotely. But we did. I think it's aired. I hope this isn't like a spoiler. Um, but me, I'll just, I won't say anything about it. I'll just say that I filmed a scene in person that I believe has aired, uh, but that we, we were the first scene, me and the people that I was shooting with, um, Dennis was like, yeah, this is our first in-person scene that we've shot, like since all of this. So we were like the Guinea pigs and we were fine. So, you know, hopefully we'll be doing more of that and then, you know, vaccine pending and all this kind of craziness, but, but yeah, they've done a great job and it's still, you know, the fans are really, really great. So it's, it's been a fun you know, we stumbled through it. <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, did you ever work a lot of the live shows at all or? Sometimes I'm usually, my availability is a little, uh, tighter than I think a lot of the other people. So it's when I can, um, but yeah, I've definitely dropped in on a few, but it's also depends on like the storyline and stuff. I know that Christian wants to have more in person this year. I don't know how I feel about that or if that's going to be a thing. Um, but hopefully, cause that's when it's really fun because then, you know, it's, it does feel more like the wrestling dynamic, which yeah, I really sure. love. Cause I love wrestling. So it's like that, that's when it gets fun. And then obviously as a performer, I'm like, yeah, I'm on stage and yeah, screaming at you and I'm bad. Meh. So then it's fun. Uh, so I hope we get to, to go back to that. Cause that's the, that's like the fun performer aspect that I enjoy the most, I think. Well, since you said you love wrestling, I can't not mention this. I'm a huge wrestling fan. Who is like your favorite yeah. wrestler? I mean, I don't know. Cause I'm like, a <laughs> like, I'm not like in, like, I just watch it and I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. I don't have favorite people. I know that Ken's favorite female wrestler is Alexa Bliss. And I have a lot of mixed feelings about that, okay. but I don't know that I have like a current one. I think I always get in trouble. Cause I think Roman is really cute. Cause I love like the call, like the call Drogo vibe. Uh, but I'm not, I don't like keep up to date with the storylines. I just love it. Like I love, I'm very athletic. I'm very like aggressive. Like I do boxing and Pilates and anything that's like angsty. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, I understand. Mm-hmm. And we have like one of our very, very good friends, like owns his own wrestling company. So obviously not now, but we used to always go to the, all of their shows, but 
yeah, I don't have a, I guess I don't have a favorite. Who's your favorite? Uh, well, I mean, gee, that's a, that's a loaded question. <laughs> if you say Alexa uh, Bliss, I will hang up on you right now. <laughs> no, no, I mean, no offense to Alexa Bliss, I do like her, but no, like, I all time Stone Cold Steve Austin in The Rock is, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like John Cena. Uh, what's my favorite now? Shit. Um, oh, I, I do like Roman, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, Roman, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Roman's good, so. Yeah, yeah I just uh, like know, the bad Alexa's guys. up there, too, so. I mean, okay, fine. <laughs> but uh, for, the, for the, like, the girls, like, my favorite right now is either, well, she, she's on maternity leave, but Becky Lynch or uh, Oscar mm-hmm. is my two favorites, so. Yeah, I know. I like a, I'm, I'm just bad with names. I just like enjoy watching it, but I'm not keeping up on the names. Right. And there was a really great film about, uh, is it Paige that like Lena oh, yeah. was in? And, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought that movie was so good. It like gave me feelings. I was like, oh God, <laughs> I was like getting choked up. So it's, yeah, her story is like super sad, but yeah, I, like I loved, I loved her stuff. Like from back in the day, like watching those old YouTube clips and stuff like that. So anybody who's evil, I'm going to vote for them. Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you're like your team bad guys. So there you go. Always, always, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so you know, we got to hosting, and since during pandemic, you started getting more into rake into Reiki, right? Is that was, yeah, that was during pandemic, or was it before? I mean, I become familiar with Reiki because when I first heard of Reiki, I was like, "That's made up," and you're insane. And then, like down the line later, I actually experienced Reiki for the first time in person. And I was like, Oh shit, because I literally left. It was like a Reiki class, like a group Reiki class, like kind of what I do, but, uh, it was at the den in studio city. And I left feeling like super high. Like I was like super euphoric. I was like, what the hell was that? Like, I was like, I feel awesome. Like, and I was like blown away. So that's when I started to get more into it just on a personal level. I was like, Oh, this is really legitimate. And then I'm just a very curious intellectual person. So trying to like figure out like the science and all that. But then when COVID happened, I was like, I, and it happened so quickly and easily, which I think sometimes when the universe is just like, this is for you, that's how it happens. It's just like very buttery. Um, Cause I don't really remember like the conscious decision where I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. It just really fell into my lap, like really easy. And I I mean, I just, cause it's a lot of, so I trained to become a Reiki uh, practitioner and now Reiki master. So it's a lot of classes. It's a lot of studying. It's a lot of hours of practice. It's a lot of reading. I studied under, you know, a few different Reiki masters, Reiki master teachers. Um, and I did it all in, you know, a year and it would have taken me, I mean, at least three years had it not been for COVID. So I was grateful for that because now I have my own Reiki business, which is very fun. It's very fun to be a female business owner. And it's very fun to have like a quote unquote day job that I'm in control of and passionate about. So I'm very, I'm in love with it. It's so much fun. Nice. Yeah, like I think the first time I ever heard of Reiki was on it was on an episode of Thirty Rock where like Alex Baldwin. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, I have that like clip on my Instagram. I was rewatching Thirty Rock and he's like, Lemon, it's I love Thirty Rock so much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know I literally know the exact clip you're talking about. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, so I heard of it through that and I always it's always been like in my like, peripheral since then and then Yeah. I did go to like a like an actual like class out here. Uh, one of my friends took me, and it's like you like I walked away from it like holy shit! I feel fucking fantastic. Like yeah. Wow. Where did you go? Where was the class? Uh, it was somewhere in Silver Lake. Oh, sick. Um, I can't remember the. I'm like I'm still kind of still like two years into living in in LA. I'm still trying to like learn everything, but like yeah, somewhere in Silver oh, Lake. Yeah. Man, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you were like a newbie newbie. Yay. Yeah, yeah. I moved out here in 2019. And and like just as I was like starting the momentum was finally on my side. And then yep. after COVID <laughs> happened. And I was like, well. Yeah. And you were like, thanks, universe. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's but awesome. Yeah. Welcome. But it's funny, yeah. though. Like, I can survive a pandemic. Like a year, li- a year living here in the pandemic. Like, wow. I made it. A you year. can do anything. Exactly. Yeah. So like, all right, well year three of living in LA here we go <laughs> I know which and basically it's like last year didn't count so you're still ahead of the game so don't even worry about yeah, it yeah technically that's true yeah 2020 was just like uh you know it happened but not really so whatever we'll throw it away yeah birthdays don't count years don't count nah uh, I don't oh, know yeah, so I, yeah I'm definitely totally one year younger than I am awesome <laughs> like I feel younger than ever <laughs> I look older than ever though no <laughs> 
Nah, plus I, I never age anyway. Like if you see like old pictures of me, it's just it's the exact same. So I'm like, oh, I believe it. Yeah, no, white people age like shit. We're monsters. <laughs> it's we get what we deserve down the yeah, line. Yeah, like as it. I like put on my retinol cream, I'm like, <laughs> please, Lord. But yeah, no, it doesn't count at all. That's amazing. Good for you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, so you you leading your class now? How did you? How hard was it like to build like a community? Like you know, getting enough people to start a class and start a business. I mean, the kind of like back office shit was really, really hard. It's a lot of work, like navigating, like what's my, what's my intake paperwork. And, you know, I'm insured and I got to make sure that I'm legally all sound and covered and above board with California laws and blah, blah. So like all that stuff was a lot, but as far as like actual, like clientele, it was actually, you know, and again, I think that the universe is def was definitely like, Grace, this is your thing. You need to do this. Um, Cause that part was very you know, much smoother than it should have been. And I'm very, very grateful for that. Because again, like as an actor, as you know, as you know, like, it's like, I have 18 jobs, I would like to have like, two or three, that'd be nice. So it's like, this is definitely heading in that direction, which is very refreshing and, and very rewarding, because it's very rewarding work. Um, but yeah, like all the kind of like, like technical stuff was, was just, I mean, it's just hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of work. But as far as like actual people, like the community that I have is really great. And everybody's really cool and really open-minded and having like just extraordinary results like I like to where I'm even like shit like I am so good at this like it's really <laughs> exciting and it's a lot of fun and now doing the class uh is just another extension like I just am excited to keep building it because it's really it's so important for me to like do stuff that's rewarding that's why I was so bad at coffee bean and why I hated it so much like and that's why I love acting and why I love Reiki because I feel like I'm touching people's lives mm -hmm. I'm you know making you know contributing to positive change you know obviously like acting is art so it's like there's that whole thing like that kind of stuff really feeds me so it's nice to have that as a as a side thing yeah well as an actor I want to ask you this like who is an actor that stood out to you like and was like the the positive influence. Like, oh, I want to do that. That was like, for me, I it's hard. I can't like think of like one person. I always like go back to like either like Denzel, Will Smith, or even like Leo as like examples. Like I would watch this thing. Like, man, I want to like impact somebody the way like they're impacting me right now. Who is that for you? Exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously Charlton Heston. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, I think probably the first person, like if I was thinking of somebody like in particular, it was probably Angelina Jolie, but because Angelina Jolie was in my process of growing up was the first actor that I saw that was really successful, but that was also very alternative and was bisexual and had black hair and white skin and had blood on her necklace and her neck like that to me because I was definitely like that goth kid like pansexual I was like oh like I don't know where I fit in. And then when I saw her I was like oh shit. Like that's somebody who's, that's me. Like I saw myself in her in a lot of ways. So that was the first person that kind of expanded that aspect for me. And then down the line, you know, obviously a lot of people did. I mean, I'm so, there's a lot of like people from like the Royal Shakespeare Company that I could just watch those videos from the seventies all day long, like Ian McKellen all day long um, and like stuff like that. But I'm also just very moved by, I find that I am more moved by particular performances than a singular actor. Like I really, really, really love Rooney Mara and the American girl with the dragon tattoo. I don't love a lot of her other performances. I love her as a person in real life and I love that performance. Um, so it's usually like a particular film or something that really moves me versus like a particular set of actors. I'm, I'm so like, glad you mentioned the American version of girl with the dragon tattoo. Cause I think I was like, Tell my friends, I think I'm the only person who likes that movie, and I wanted a sequel to it, and I hate that we never got it, but whatever. Oh, I, lo I lo I'm no joke, that is, if I had to choose one movie, that is absolutely my favorite film. I love everything about it. And the new one that they did with Claire Foy was utter garbage. Yeah, I love Claire the Foy. Spider's Web, yeah. Yeah, was it was just, like, just trash, trash. It was god awful, but I don't know if you know, I don't know if you read the series, which is phenomenal if you have not, but like the book series that it's based off of, but the girl in the spider's web was not technically written by like Stieg Larsson, who's the author, like that was the one that he died when he had, he had like started it, and then he passed away, and then so like other people kind of like finished it, and I was like, yeah, I can tell, like this is, yeah, yeah. and then the movie, I was just like, what? Like, I was so amped. I was like, yeah, clear voice, the bomb. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I, so many thumbs down, all of my thumbs down. Oh. Um, I was bummed out. But yeah, it, it's, it's so good. The sound design, uh, Daniel, uh, oh, I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I get to watch it every day. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I, uh, 
about it. I still remember when the trailer came out for it too, and I was like hyping up to my friend, like this is gonna be awesome. I had just watched the Sweden the Swedish versions of it, so mm-hmm. I was already in like this like it's gonna start off this movie, it's gonna lead to this, to that, it's gonna be a trilogy of films, it's gonna be amazing. And it came oh out, nobody yeah. talked about it. like what the fuck, guys? A hundred percent. It was exactly my reaction. When I saw the trailer, it was like immigrant song. Immigrant I was song. Like, yeah, oh exactly. shit. I was like, this is gonna be the tits. And then I saw it and I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And then everyone was like, Mm-mm, I didn't like it. Yeah, and David me. Fincher is like totally my jam. Like that's definitely like my acting aesthetic, if I if you will. So it's yeah. I mean, I, I'm obsessed with it. I watch Good. it all the time. It's funny because I was working at the movie theater at the time when the trailer came out, we would we would screen movies and literally every chance I get, I would put that trailer yes. for the movie screen. And like my friend Jacob, like, Chris, seriously again, like, yes, we're gonna oh, keep it's... watching this until it comes out. <laughs> Especially like trailers are already so fucking good. Like I just love trailers. They're so much fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I would love to see that. I would love to see that trailer on the big screen. It's amazing. Like I think. Cause like I don't have anything to play it on, but I I kept the actual like film of it too. Cause like when we were like when my theater went from like uh, when they I switched know, over to like, I, I can tell it now, but like when we went from like uh, you know film to digital, it's like oh what are you gonna what do you want to do with all these trailers? Like well you can just toss them. Like well I'll just I'll just take <gasps> them. So <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my god. No I I love, I used to work in a screening room, so I know all about that. It's like wouldn't people be like, we have a 35 millimeter and we'd be like, oh, we can only do DCP now. But yeah, that's that's amazing. That's su- look at you being sneaky. You're like, yeah. no, no, no. Exactly. Yeah. And I also I mean I also took some other things, but you know, that's that's neither <laughs> here nor there. So. <laughs> They're like, guys, where's the popcorn machine? I don't know, man. I don't it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's where's like the god. slicer? Oh, I don't know, it's weird, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well someone else took it there's like a guy you know you're like it was so weird he just like came in and i don't know he said he was a maintenance guy it was really strange i didn't want to question it so i was like yeah whatever (laughs) yeah so i guess we should just you know call it a day my bad yeah just like yeah you know uh, case that case is solved yeah (laughs) yeah super weird but on with the day (laughs) yeah so grace you also do your own podcast do you how'd you get into podcasting Um, it's well, I'm on, I finished season one and I'm on a break right now because, you know, very fortunately there we're actually in pilot season right now, which I wasn't expecting it to feel like pilot season. And it does, which is awesome. Uh, so I'm on, uh, like the, my hiatus right now, but it's called think piecing available everywhere. Um, and that's my solo podcast where we do like each episode is about a new topic that is oftentimes something that's like misunderstood or that I think we can like shed some new light on. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I think my, I think my season one was like 22 episodes. Um, and then hopefully I'll get back to it once I have a little more, uh, downtime, which is certainly not now. Cause I'm about to fall over dead, but I'm very grateful to be busy. Uh, but yeah, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work as you know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Like it's, it's, I mean, it's good that we're busy. Cause you know, yeah, <laughs> that means we're doing well, but it's like, oh, you also want to do like your podcast and stuff and you want to like have, be consistent with it, but it's like, well, shit, I'm working on this this week, so I can't, I can't do it, so I'll have to take a break, and yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, lot of work. Like, I feel like people don't, who maybe haven't done it, but like, I mean, I, I certainly, like, when I started my first podcast, I had no idea. I was like, oh my god, like, wouldn't it be fun? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, what have I done? Like, it is just hours of work. Um, but yeah, but it's a, but again, that's also kind of something that for me was very uh, rewarding because I got to talk about like kind of like the witchier shit that I'm into um so I love I'm I loved doing it. I love doing it and I will do more I just don't know I'm not sure when I know everybody's like Bleh. like everybody's always asking me when and I'm like I don't know I don't have a schedule for you because I don't know I'm hoping it's really, it's not like, one day, like boom there it is so I know maybe I should just do like a rant like I'll just randomly surprise people and just like publish a new episode and, and then yeah we'll see but but yeah but it's fun well, is there anything else you're working on in the future that you want to hint at or, you know, or, or, or if you can legally say, cause you never know if NDAs and, and whatnot that are out there. I know. Yeah, no, I can say I have, well, I'm pinned for a show right now. I can't talk about that yet. Cause I, I mean, I technically haven't booked it yet. Um, I think I probably will, but so I have that. So that's very exciting and secret. And then, um, I have my horror film, pretty boy. That's coming out sometimes this year, some, sometimes this year. Um, I don't think we have a re- an official release date yet, but sometime uh, later, probably in the fall, uh, my horror film will come out. So that's super fun. And then my little, uh, rom-com, the package came out in December. That's on passion flicks. And I think that's it. Oh, and then I have my Reiki class tomorrow. 
Hey, there you go. It's on the Great. last Saturday of every month. Uh, people can go to Reiki Healing with Grace.com and sign up for that. And I think that's it. I have so much stuff. I have a cute dog. <laughs> Ken's pretty cool. This is craziness. Like it's just this year is flying by. It's like I can't keep track of everything. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's yeah, it's pretty much the end of March right now. It's like, wow, this this year just like started. It feels like it, yeah, it does. It does feel like that. Yeah. It's very strange. I feel like we always say that every year. I feel like that's such a word. Yeah, time's just flying by, but I mean, it, like, I feel like it really is. Well, I mean, that wasn't the case last year. That year was just fucking drugs, but you know, whatever. Oh God. <laughs> like 2020 is forever going to be the butt of every joke. Like, remember when everything that could go wrong went wrong? <laughs> yes. It was called 2020. <laughs> 2020. Yeah. It, you know, it's funny too. Like when you're going to, especially as us, we're like, have like younger generations, like, oh man, it sucks. Like, Oh, you want to hear what sucks? Come back to oh 2020, my God. you little I, youngster here. <laughs> oh, even like now, because I remember, and this, I mean, this makes me sound like a, like a grouchy old bitch, but everybody like last year was like, I just feel so bad for these high school students who won't be able to go to prom. I'm like, bitch, I got laid off. I'm sorry for the people who can't afford rent. Like mm-hmm. Chad will be fine. He can go to a dance later in life. Like exactly. I do not care, Like, <laughs> but maybe I'm just old and bitter. No, I, I I had that same thing too last year. Like, oh, these got these guys in their prom. Like, whatever. Come on. Like, do you remember your prom? No. So, like, whatever. I was like, I was like, yeah. Like, nobody cares. And if you do, if you're later, if after prom you're still thinking about prom, you're lame. Like, you got to get over it. It's one night. I was super coked out at my prom, so there you go. Like, who cares? You got to move on. Like, people are sick. We got bigger problems than Tommy's prom. <laughs> Stupid. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it was great. Where can people find you on the interwebs? Yes, the interwebs. You can follow me online everywhere at Mrs. Grace Face. Uh, you can follow my Reiki stuff everywhere at Reiki Healing with Grace, um, and that's also the website ReikiHealingWithGrace.com. And you can go to my website HeatherGraceHancock.com if you want. I mean, I don't. Yeah, say hello. And I think that's it. This has been so fun. Yeah. No, thank. No, it's been fun for me too. Thanks for coming on. I, I do have to ask. You, since you said yeah. the Grace Hancock, was there a yeah. choice about going by Grace, or do you always just not want to go by Heather Hancock? No, I. When I was younger, I went by Heather. My mom has always called me Grace, but my like my dad calls me Heather sometimes. But I kind of it sort of developed into Heather Grace, and then eventually, like the Heather just got dropped, and I really prefer Grace because also there's kind of a um, there was kind of like a life switch for me when it start when the Heather kind of dropped off. So it's kind of like, like <laughs> before and after Christ, it's like before and after Heather, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I kind of feel, but I mean, nobody's called, I mean, nobody calls, has called me Heather in like 15 years, but, uh, but unless I'm like on set and I'm too lazy to like correct people. Cause it's like my SAG name is Heather Grace Hancock. So uh, sometimes that's weird. Cause they'll be like, Oh, Heather. And I'm like, shit, is that, do you mean me? But me? usually <laughs> now I am also just more confident that I just don't give a fuck. And I'm like, yeah, I go by Grace. Hi. Um, cause sometimes it's, you feel bad, like letting people know that, but I think that's also like a weird, like female thing. Like, I just don't want to cause any waves. And now I just like, don't care anymore. But yeah, but no, I definitely, I definitely prefer Grace. I, I do not like it when people call me Heather. <laughs> no, I get, I get that. I get that too. It's like, if someone ever like, I mean, it's not really the same, but if someone ever like called me like Christopher, like looking like, huh, weird, just, just Chris. <laughs> like, know? excuse me, sir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know sometimes people call me Gracie, which is like. I love, but it's like, we have to be at a certain level for that. You know what I mean? It's like when people come in hot being like, Gracie, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, buy me a glass of wine first. Like, right, right. Glass of wine, yeah. margarita. Then we can talk about you calling me Gracie. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like, like people, like Ken hates when people call him Kenny. Like he absolutely hates that name, but he never tells people that he hates it. So a lot of people call it and I'm like, I call him Kenneth because I'm 90, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> names are a funny thing for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, you old soul, you. Thank you for so much for coming on to my show. Uh, I was just, like, I said, this was fun. It was good, good hearing your stories. Good. I, I went out to track down this Grey's Anatomy DVD, like season ten. You said, <laughs> hopefully, you're in like the again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find the deleted scenes. I'm like, oh, hey, there she is. So, I know, I know. Especially because I got to flirt with that. Oh God, he was so hot and he was so nice. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Hopefully, it exists somewhere. I, I want to stay season ten, so you know, fingers crossed. Somebody track it down. <laughs> Someone track it down in like a month. You'll see it on YouTube somewhere. Like, oh, how'd that happen? You know. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. No, this has been great. Thank you so much. This is fun. Thank you. Oh well, yes, definitely check her out. 
check her out on social medias. And if you're into Reiki, go to her Reiki website. It's awesome. I did yeah. it before and it did wonders for me. So it'll do yeah. wonders for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll have a great rest of your, uh, your day, your weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. This has been yeah. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see you later. Yay. Bye. Bye.